Recording. Okay. So today we're going to talk about output and costs and uh, discuss that in details. So the objectives are to distinguish between uh, the short run and long run, uh, explain the relationship between a firm output and labor employed in the short run, explain the relationship between a firm output and cost in the short run, derive and, ex uh, and explain a firm short run cost curves, explain the relationship between a firm's output and cost in the long run, and derive and explain a firm's long run average cost curve. Okay. This uh, question that we're going to start our class with is why are banks closing teller windows and replacing them with the ATMs? You know why? Why do automakers have unused production capacity while electric utilities sometimes can produce uh, enough to meet demand? And this chapter studies the first production possibilities and cost of production. So these are the type of questions that we would be able to answer. Decision time frames. The firm makes many decisions to achieve its main objective. So main objective as we discussed before was to maximize its profit. So each firm will decide uh, and make a lot of decisions to achieve the main objective which is uh, maximizing their profit. Some decisions are critical to the survival of the firm. Some decisions are irreversible. So, or very costly to reverse. So, let's say they are that costly that firms never decide to to do that. So, uh, some decisions are reversible, as we said. Other decisions are easily reversed and are less critical to the survival of the firm, but still influence the profit. So, some of the, some other decisions are easily reversed and are less critical to the survival of the firm but they still influence the profit. And all decisions can be placed into two time frames, the short run and the long run. Okay. So the short run. The short run is a time frame in which the quantity of one or more resources used in production is fixed. So we have a sh certain uh, time frame which is fixed and uh, the quantity of one or more resources uh, used is uh, apparent. So for most of the firms, the capital uh, called the firm's plan is fixed in the short run. So most of the firms make sure they have their capital or their plan fixed in the short run. Other resources used by the firm, such as labor, raw materials, and energy can be changed in the short run. And short run decisions are easily reversed. So the, the good thing about short run is that uh, things can be easily reversed. So when something is short run is, is in a fixed amount of time and uh, uh, mostly they're not irreversible. How about long run? Long run is a time frame in which quantities of all resources, including the plant size, can be varied. So long run decisions are not easily reversed. A sunk cost is a cost incurred by a firm and cannot be changed. If a firm plan has no re resale value, the amount paid for it is a con sunk cost. Some costs are irrelevant to a firm's decisions. Okay, so long run, differently from short run, is a time frame that the quantities of all resources, they vary, they're not fixed. And then they're not, apparently they're not easily reversed, it's much harder. And you have another concept here called sunk cost. Sunk cost is a cost that is incurred by your firm and it cannot be changed. So mostly sunk costs are not helping the max, the final uh, destination or final 
uh, decision of a firm which is maximizing the profit. Some costs are those kind type of costs that is you're spending more and more, and it's not helping you reach out or do what you want to do, which is maximize the profit of the company. Short run technology constraint. To increase the output in the short run, a firm must increase the amount of labor employed. So one of the ways to increase the uh, output in the short run is increase the labor. Three concepts describe the relationship between output and quantity of labor employed. Total product, marginal product, and average product. So when we increase the labor employed, we actually increase or make changes on total product, marginal product, and average product. Okay. So the total product schedules are actually the total output produced in a given period of time. So the total amount of product is the total output that we can produce in a certain amount of time. The marginal product, though, is, uh, is the change in total product that results from one unit increase in the quantity of labor employed with all other inputs remaining the same. So marginal is an increase, a one level, one unit uh, level increase, uh, which is due to the fact of um, the uh, increase, one unit increase in the labor. And average product of a labor is equal to total product divided by the quantity of labor. So if you divide a product by its labor, we get the number which is our average product. Marginal product is a unit increase because of a unit increase in our labor. So then we have the product curves. Product curves are graphs of the three product concepts that show how total product, marginal product, and average product change as the quantity of labor employed changes. Okay, the total product curve. As you can see in this curve, we have the output and we have the labor. So it shows the total product. So the total product here shows how total product changes with the quantity of labor employed. So as you can see, as our labor increases, the total product is also increasing. So the total product curve is similar to PP. PPF. It's separate attainable output level form of unattainable unattainable uh, levels in a short run. So as you can see. The attainable is where we have what we can produce and unattain unattainable is the part that we cannot produce. So it is the same concept as product possibility frontier, if you remember we discussed that before in our previous uh, sessions. So basically the total product curve and uh, product possibility frontier are pretty much the same. So within the number of, uh, I mean within the use of the labor we can produce a certain number of output which is actually our uh, product possibility frontier. So the, the the shaded area is attainable. We can create that, and the, the part beyond that is unattainable because with this number of label, we can only produce this number of uh, production. The marginal product curve. So marginal product of a labor curve and how the marginal product curve relates to total product curve. The first worker is hired produces four units of labor, right? So one la uh, labor equals four production. So you see how the one unit increase increases 
uh, the number of production. So the second worker hire produces six units of output. So the total four plus six is ten. The third worker uh, cre uh, creates three uh, units of output. So altogether thirteen, and so on. As you can see, it's uh, this is uh, our uh, marginal product output, and as you can see, it's also shown on the um, total product output. Okay, the height of uh, each bar measures the marginal product of measurement. So, for example, when a labor increases from 2 to 3, the total product increases from 10 to 13. So, the marginal product is uh, 3 units of output. So, the difference. So, the difference of output is actually the what we're looking for. Then, to make a graph of the marginal product of labor, we can stack the bars in previous graph side by side. Then the mar marginal product of labor curve passes through the midpoint of these bars. As you can see, so we have marginal product on one side and we have the labor. So the marginal product is actually the difference between the, the, the number of the product out there. So we put the difference increases and then we put the labor. So the midpoint is we call, what we call the average. So as you can see, if we put this put it this way at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sarge, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm hear you, hearing you clearly. Oh, your voice is on, so let me just mute you, I think. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, activate your microphone. Otherwise, uh, could you please uh, mute that? Thanks. Okay. So as you can see here, the midpoint shows us the marginal product uh, for labor. So the midpoint, as you can see, where the the, the bar touches that uh, that curve, is our marginal uh, product for uh, different the numbers of labor today. And we have all production processes are like the one shown here. They have initially increasing marginal returns and eventually diminishing marginal returns. So as you can see, first, as we increase the labor, our marginal uh, product input increases. But after a while, it will just go down, downward. Because if you remember, we had this concept discussed before. So your marginal utility, if you remember, would increase and then it will decrease. Same concept, like one worker increases four, the second worker increases six, but as you, your your number of labor increases because of the limitations of technology and workers and all that, then extra number of workers, they not necessarily double or triple or uh, make your production four times as much. Like the bigger the labor, then the smaller the increase in your production will be. So the first few labor, uh, laborers will increase the the production tremendously, but as as we go along in the next few laborers, they they increase the production less than those in the beginning. So initial increasing marginal returns. When the marginal product of a worker exceeds the marginal product of the previous worker. The marginal product of a labor increases and the firm experiences increasing marginal returns. So as you can see, when the marginal product of a worker exceeds the previous one, the previous worker, 
So as you, as you can see here, the first worker creates four, the second creates six, so there's a two level of increase. So that, the marginal product of labor increases altogether, and that fair increases marginal returns. So now, eventually, diminishing marginal returns, when the marginal product of a worker is less than the marginal product of the previous worker, the marginal product of labor decreases, and we experience diminishing marginal returns. So you can see it's diminishing marginal returns. We still have returns, but it's diminishing, it's less. So the first worker increases more, so that increases uh, the marginal product of the labor, and that increases the marginal return. But the next worker uh, has less marginal product, so that causes a diminishing marginal return. Okay, short logic knowledge constraint continues. Increasing marginal returns arises from increased specialization and division of labor. So we we always want to have increased marginal returns. And where does it come from? It comes from a specialization and division of labor. But diminishing marginal re uh, returns arises from the fact that employing additional units of labor means each worker has less access to capital and less space in which to work. So as I said, our technology, our limitations will limit us. And it doesn't mean that the more worker you have, you have exactly the same number twice, three times as much or four times as much. The first three workers too, but as your workers increases, the, the space they have, the limitations, the number of machines they can use, it's pretty much the same, so they cannot increase that much in the marginal return. So we have the diminishing increase in marginal return. So diminishing marginal returns are so pervasive that they are elevated to the status of law. So the law of diminishing marginal returns states that a firm, as a firm uses more of a variable input with a given quantity of fixed input, the marginal product of a variable input eventually diminishes. So the same concept. So as we increase the variable input, even the quantity of fixed input, the marginal product of the variable input eventually diminishes. So it's actually explaining the same fact. The, the law of diminishing returns is actually as we increase the, the variable input, which is our labor, as we increase it, the, the, the product, the marginal product will decrease. The increasing that will decrease. Means we will have less increase as we had in the beginning. So let's say if we had an increase of four, for the next level is of four, we'll have three and two, and it will just go down. Okay. So now here we have the average product curve. So figure ten three shows the average product curve and its uh, relationship with marginal product curve. When uh, marginal product exceeds average product, average product increases. So here we have two different bars. One is the marginal product that we just discussed. But the average product was the, the, the product output divided by labor, if you remember. So when the marginal product exceeds average product, means our marginal product is more than uh, Uh, um, average product, so it will, we will have a trend of increase in average product. It's very simple. So we discuss the marginal product. When, when we have more marginal products than we have average, our average product is on the trend of increasing. And when marginal product is below average products, the average product is decreasing. So it just shows the trend. When we have more marginal products, the average product is more. But when we have less marginal products than average, the average product is on the trend to, to decrease. It actually makes sense because when we are, when our extra laborer, extra uh, worker is increasing our marginal product, 
So generally, our average product, which is output divided by labor, is also increasing. But then, the, the extra labor that we add doesn't add that much to our product. So the average, which is the output divided by labor, is on the level of decreasing, on the trend to decrease, because the extra labor is not adding that much to our production. So it's just a, it's just <clears throat> showing what we just discussed, which is common sense, uh, in, in in a in a figure here. Okay. Now. The relationship between a student's marginal class grade and her or his grade point average is similar to, to, uh, to that between marginal product and average product. If a student's next class grade is higher or lower than the student's GPA, this marginal grade will pull the student's GPA up or down. If the next class grade is the same as the GPA, the GPA remains unchanged. So this is just for you to understand how it works. Like suppose you're taking a class. You're taking your business economics. You get a grade here. And then you have another class, uh, your leadership. You get another grade there. If your next grade, you're talking about individual, in leadership is higher than your economics, your grade point average will be on the trend to increase because you added one more course and you got extra points. But if they're the same grades, it will not change. But if it's a lower, then it will decrease the average, the grade point average. It's very simple, it's just for you to understand. Uh, I'm not sure if I understand your question, Mr. Barr. Does marginal product over average product? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Marginal product, as we discussed, is the extra unit of production because of the extra labor. But, but the average is always the number of the output divided by the number of the labor. So now short run cost. To produce more output in the short run, the firm must employ more labor, which means that it must increase its cost. To describe the way a firm's cost change as total product changes by using the three cost concepts and three types of cost curves, total cost, marginal cost, and average cost. So as we discussed uh, the short run and long run, in order to increase the output, you just, yeah, OK, good. Uh, so so yeah, it could be over, equal, or below. Uh, OK, so to produce more output in the short run, the firm must employ more labor. It's pretty common sense. You need more labor to create more, right? But this means more cost, right? So we also need to learn how the total cost, marginal cost, and average cost work. What we just learned for uh, marginal product, we need to learn it for cost. So the firm's total cost, we call it TC, is the cost of all resources used. Fixed cost, total fixed cost, is the cost of the firm's use uh, of fixed inputs. Fixed costs do not change without output, with output. So we have certain fixed costs, like electricity or stuff that, uh, I mean, certain, like rental that is the same. Electricity, I mean, it's, it could be uh, variable. And then we have total variable cost is the cost of firm's variable inputs. Variable, variable costs do change with output. So actually, electricity is a variable cost, because the more we produce, the more we use the electricity, so it actually varies. But, uh, but let's say the rent per month is going to be the same, or the tax, or all that. So those would be fixed costs. 
So the total cost that we said, the cost of all resources used, is actually the total fixed cost plus the total variable cost. OK, so as you can show, as you can see in this figure, the total cost is the same at each output level. But certain output level, there is a total cost. Total fixed cost is also, sorry, total fixed cost is actually the same at each output level. So we have a certain level of total fixed cost, which is the same for whatever output level. Doesn't matter. We have a total fixed cost. We have the rent. We have certain uh, amount of money that we have to pay every single month or every single day when we divide it by the days. So that is going to be the same. But total variable cost increases as the output is increasing. So as you're increasing your output, you're using more electricity, you're, you're paying uh, more overtime and all that. So it's like uh, increasing according to the output. But the total cost, which is the sum of the total fixed cost and total variable cost, also increases. So the only one which is stable is total fixed cost. And the total variable cost curve uh, gets its shape uh, from the total product curve. So you can notice that the total product curve becomes steeper at uh, low output levels and then less steep at high. In contrast, the total variable cost curve becomes less steep at low and steeper at high. So they are opposite of each other. So the total product becomes a steeper at low and less steep at high. But on the other side, the total variable cost is less steep at low and higher at high. So because we have less steep total variable cost, that's how we can afford uh, a less steep total product, which makes sense. Because the second product that we were adding uh, or were not as expensive, or let me put it this way, the, the total variable cost, like the total amount of cost that we end up paying by increasing the 15th output, the increase in the total cost will be higher because of all these variables in, involved. Whereas, is there any way total cost is input and how? Yes. Uh, definitely, there is a link between uh, out input or input. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, we haven't discussed input yet. We, we are talking about the labor and the output. The input is your material or what you use to uh, basically uh, get the uh, product. So because we are doing some production on the, on the materials, so we end up using because the input is basically our raw material it's pretty much the same price but what it, what adds to the price is the the pro process of change that we do on the product to create the final product that we want to make so the input is basically uh, mostly the material and of course you can in some token you can also consider your labor as an input because you're putting your uh, labor on top of your material, and those are all that you put in. So uh, there is a relationship. Of course, the more input you put, the higher your cost will be, your total cost. OK. So here, to see the relationship between the total variable cost curve 
and the total product curve. Let's look at let's look again at the total product curve. As you can see here, the more labor, the more output you have. And now let's add a second X axis in order to measure the total variable cost. So one worker costs, let's say, $25 an hour. Two workers cost $50, and so on. So next x-axis line up. So now, we can replace the quantity of labor on the x-axis, the total variable cost. I'm not sure if you're following. Let's go back. In order to, to see how we can work with total uh, product curve and total variable cost, we are just changing the x axis here. First, we are just saying this labor, this output, so it will give you total product. But instead of labor, if we do a multi multiplication of the labor times the, the price or the cost, which gives us a total cost, I mean, the, the cost of the labor, which, which would be like first one is, first labor is only 25, the second is 50, the third is 150 and goes on, sorry, 75. In that sense, Instead of the total product curve, we will have total variable cost. So instead of putting the labor, we are putting the cost of labor per day, and we have the output, so it's giving us the total variable cost. So when we do that, we must change the name of the curve to total variable cost, but it is graphed with cost on the axis and output on the y axis. So if we now redraw the graph by having cost on the x-axis and output on the x, and you've got the total variable cost, and we can put a total fixed cost curve back in the figure, and add the total fixed cost and variable cost, and you've got the total cost. So we're just playing with the graph. So we just start one more time so that we don't have any confusion. The first, we have labor and output. So out of that, the curve would be total product. If we change the labor axis with the cost, then we will have this, which is our total variable cost. But now, if we change that into the cost on y-axis and output, then we'll get back to what we had as total cost equals total variable cost plus the total cost. This is what we had a few slides back here. If you remember, we said we have cost and the output, so basically, we are getting all these sorted out. Okay, so what is marginal cost? Marginal cost is the increase in total cost that results from one unit increase in the total product. Over the output range with increasing marginal returns, marginal cost falls as output increases. 
over the output range with diminishing marginal returns, marginal costs rise. So we are just trying to understand the relationship between marginal cost and marginal returns. So first we realize that when we uh, the, 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 the unit increase, the, the, the increase in total cost that results from one unit increase in total product is called marginal, marginal cost. So when we have increasing marginal returns, if you remember, which means that the next uh, laborer is adding to our production more than the first one, so we have increasing marginal returns, we have decreasing marginal cost. But when we have diminishing marginal returns, means the next laborer is adding less than the previous one, so we have diminishing marginal returns, then we will have increasing marginal cost. So it's just the relationship between these two. If the marginal cost is high or going high, then our marginal return is going down. If our marginal return is going high, our marginal cost is going down. So these work against each other. They are just opposite. And then the average cost. The average cost measures can be derived from each of the total cost measures. So the average fixed cost is total fixed cost per unit of output. So instead of just the term fixed cost or variable cost or total cost, we're getting average before them. So average is the total fixed cost per unit of output. So the average variable cost is the total variable cost per unit, and average total cost is the total cost per unit. So it's just be dividing the cost by the, the output to get the average. Okay. So as you can see here, instead of the, the, the variable cost and fixed cost, now we're dealing with the average. So So the average, as you can see, the average fixed cost falls as output increases. So the average fixed cost will definitely fall because it's going to be the same, but when it's the same for the extra numbers of output, you will have less fixed cost because you're dividing it by a bigger number. But average uh, variable cost is actually increasing it's in a U shape. So first it decreases and then it's going to increase. Because as you remember, we have a adding to our marginal, uh, going back here, let me just show you here, right here. Then we have marginal returns, we have less marginal cost, and then our average cost will also go down. But as we go along and our, we have diminishing marginal returns, we will have extra average cost. Okay, so here is a bit like few uh, figures and bars together. So the average total cost, as you can see here in blue, is also a curve. The marginal cost curve is very special. As you can see, marginal cost curve is kind of extremely U-shaped. Uh, the average variable cost is falling. Marginal cost is below average cost. And when it's increasing, the average uh, variable cost will be changing. So where average variable cost is rising, marginal cost is above. So it's actually talking about a very basic concept. When we have average variable cost, which means those costs that will change with the extra output, when we have less, means the next laborer will add more to production, and so your average cost is falling, your marginal cost will, will be below. Marginal cost will be below because when your average cost is going down, it means that the next output will cost you less. So by adding one unit increase, 
in your production, you'll have less cost. But when your average cost is going up, your marginal cost will also go down, will go up, and it's be higher because average is average of increase in the cost. So by adding one level of output into your production, uh, you will have more cost. And then finally, at the minimum, average variable cost and marginal cost uh, equals the average variable cost. That red, red part, as you can see, on 10, so your average variable cost and marginal cost, they are the same at the minimum. of your variable cost. So the lowest variable cost is where your marginal cost and your average variable cost are going to be the same. So let's pause here. I don't want you to be confused. Any questions so far? Any comments or questions? Okay, so then you're good, no questions. Let's go to the next slide. Similarly, where uh, average total cost is falling, this is the blue uh, bar, blue curve, uh, marginal cost is below average total cost. So average total cost is falling, so your marginal cost will be below that. And where average total cost is rising, your marginal cost will be above that. And at the minimum, average total cost, marginal cost and average total cost will be the same. So the same concept, when average total cost is higher, so, sorry, when the average total cost is decreasing, your marginal cost should be less because it's like less increasing cost with the extra unit of production will bring you less total cost because your total cost is on the trend to decrease. But when it's on the trend to increase, it shows that your marginal, marginal cost should be increasing to cause that average total cost to increase. And a minimal uh, average total cost is where your marginal cost and average total cost are the same. So why the average total cost curve is U-shaped? Average total cost, average variable cost curve is U-shaped because initially marginal product exceeds average product, which brings rising average product and falling average variable cost. So we have more marginal product than average product in the beginning. So we have rising average product and falling average variable cost. But eventually, marginal product falls below an average product, which will bring So marginal product falls uh, below average product, which brings falling average product and rising average variable cost. And finally, the average total cost curve is U-shaped for the same reason. In addition to average total cost falls at low output levels because of average fixed cost is falling steeply. So just to simplify, just 
imagine the the we have all these first of all we have what is the average variable cost is the the number like or general variable cost divided by the output so per unit we are we are counting the cost per unit so when we are counting the cost per unit because of the increase and decrease that is like first right uh, first falling and then rising it will give, give us a u shape uh, uh, bar and uh, also keep in mind that marginal uh, product and average product uh, marginal sorry marginal cost and average variable cost to average total cost and average fixed cost they play in a certain way as we said your when your average variable cost is decreasing your marginal cost should be below it but as your average variable cost is increasing so so your marginal cost should be higher than that but there is a point that they are the same which is the lowest average variable cost which is at 10 here then for average total cost when average total cost is decreasing your marginal cost is below that but then your average total cost is increasing your marginal cost should be higher than that so it's basically the same for average variable cost or average total cost when they are decreasing your marginal cost is below them but when they are increasing your marginal cost will be above them and if, for the very simple reason that uh, when they're falling it means that the extra unit of production will cost you less that's why your marginal cost is less but then you have higher average total cost which your next level of output is more expensive so so is your marginal cost and of course your uh, even for <coughs> average fixed cost when it's decreasing you have less marginal cost and when it's I mean it will be on a uh, constant decreased uh, trend or average fixed cost so basically uh, we can say that exactly for average fixed cost so in the beginning your average fixed cost would be higher but it will end up being lower than your marginal cost very lower so just to simplify what we discussed so this is just the explanation of what I just explained to you and as you can see here is the shapes of firms cost curves are determined by the technology it uses marginal cost is at its minimum at the same output level as which marginal product is at its maximum and when marginal product is rising marginal cost is falling and average variable cost is at the minimum at the same output level as its average product is at its maximum so when the average product is rising average variable cost is falling so it's actually very very simple so if we consider the, the, the product and the the cost we'll see that the uh, marginal product and average product average product will be uh, when it's on the increasing term your marginal product would be on the uh, on the top and when it's on the decreasing term your marginal product will be decreasing and then your cost will be exactly the the reverse version because cost and your product, the marginal product, they work against each other. So when your marginal product is increasing, your marginal cost is decreasing. When your marginal product is decreasing, your marginal cost should be increasing so that it will cause it. So it's just a relationship between these two. So, so shift in cost curves. The position of a firm's cost curve depends on two factors, technology and price of productive resources. 
So technological change influences both the productivity of carriers and the cost curves. An increase in productivity shifts the average and marginal cost curves upward and the average marginal cost curves downward. If a technological advance brings more capital and less labor into use, fixed cost increases and variable cost decreases. So as you can see, fixed costs might be high at the beginning, but as our pro production goes along, it will decrease. So sometimes it is worth your while to buy something, even though it will cause a huge uh, fixed cost, but in the long run, it will decrease the variable cost because the major cost would be your variable cost. Your fixed cost is something that in the long run, because it's the same, it's not going to hurt you. What is going to hurt you in the long run is the variable cost. And in this case, average total cost increases at low output levels and decreases at high output levels. Okay. So changes in the price of resources shifts the cost curve that we discussed. And increasing fixed cost shifts the total cost. And average total uh, cost curves upward, but does not shift marginal cost curve. So as you can see, fixed cost has no relationship to our marginal cost, but it does have an effect on the, the total cost. And sorry, average total cost. An increase in variable cost is the total cost. Average total cost and marginal cost. So, just to clarify, so when you have extra fixed costs, it will change your total cost, it will change your average total cost, but not your marginal cost. But by increasing your variable cost, it will shift your total cost, your average total cost, and your marginal cost. So your variable cost will shift your marginal cost, whereas your fixed cost will not shift your uh, marginal cost. So in the long run, all inputs are available and all costs are variable. So the production function. The behavior of long run cost depends upon the firm's production function, which is the relationship between maximum output attainable and the quantities of both capital and labor. So the marginal product of capital is the increase in output resulting from one unit increase in the amount of capital employed holding constant uh, the amount of labor employed. The firm's production function exhibits diminishing marginal returns to labor for a given plant size, as well as diminishing marginal return to capital for quantity of labor. For each plant size, diminishing marginal product of labor creates a set of short-run U-shaped cost curves for marginal cost, average cost, and average total cost. So short-run cost and long-run cost. The average cost of producing a given output varies and depends on the firm's plant size. The larger the plant size, the greater is the output of uh, average total cost and so, for example, CND has four different plant sizes. One, two, three, four. Each plant has a short run average total cost curve. The firm can confirm an average total cost curve for each given output at different plant sizes. So, as you can see, the average total cost one is average total cost curve for a plant with one knitting machine. Then, the average total cost curve two is the average total cost for the two knitting machine, and then three knitting machine and four knitting machine. So you see what, what's going on here? 
So the more machines you have, your output will change, and that will move your curve. And this is just because of the fact that you have more machines that produce more. So your starting point would be at a higher amount of output. And the long run average cost curve is made up of from the lowest average total cost for each output level. We want to decide which plant has the lowest car for producing uh, each output level. Let's find the least cost way of producing a given output level. Suppose Cindy wants to produce 13 sweaters a day, right? So for 13 sweaters a day, as you can see, we have the average cost and the average cost for uh, average cost 2, which is the green bar, which is utilizing two machines, is giving her the cheapest cost. So as you can see, this cost is number two. So the long run average cost curve is the relationship between the lowest attainable average total cost and output when both the plant size and labor are very. So the long run average cost curve is planting curve that tells the firm, the plant size that minimizes the cost of producing a given output range. Once the firm has chosen the plant size, it incurs the cost that corresponds with the uh, average total cost curve for the plant. So if you look at the things long run rather than short run, there will be a minor difference. Because in the short run, because of the fixed cost of getting another machine would be very high, that it will not benefit us. But in the long run, that extra machine, even though it will incur us a, a big amount of fixed cost, but because we know that the fixed cost in the long run is going to go lower compared to, I mean, average fixed cost is going to is going to go low. So as a total, the average uh, total cost for producing the product with two machines for us would be lower. So it's really important for us to understand when we should uh, make decisions on lo short run or long run. So as you can see, this is the long run average total cost. So this also refocuses uh, the fact that we had studied before, which was economies of a scale and this economies of a scale and constant returns to scale. So economies of a scale are features of a firm technology that lead to falling longer than average cost as output increases. So this is the fact that we said when we increase more of a product in the long run, the cost will be less. But these economies of a scale are features of a firm technology that lead to rising long than average cost. And finally, constant to scale are features of a firm technology that lead to constant long run average cost as output increases. So the economies of a scale are where the long run cost is going to go down and this economies of a scale is when they're going to go up. So the firm experiences economies of a scale up to some output level, but beyond that will be the dish economies of a scale. So minimum efficiency level is the smallest quantity of output that reaches the long run cost reaches its lowest level. And in a long run average cost curve is U shaped, so the minimum point identifies the minimum efficient scale output level. Okay. So first of all, let's pause here, see if you have any questions for me.
Any comments, any questions? Anybody have any questions for me so far? Okay, so let's do some exercises. Okay, the first one is using numbers and an example, tell me how to calculate a total cost for a firm. So explain what are the total costs for that firm, what are the variable costs, and what is the total cost. So this is the first exercise, let's do that. I'll give you a couple minutes, just uh, how you can Tell me your answers or write it down and, you know, just a couple minutes. A very simple example we can give, like certain firms and just say this is the firm, this is their total cost, this is their variable cost, and this is uh, how we calculate it. Okay, let's just start with that.
Okay, so uh, for Mr. Barak, we have here total uh, fixed cost of the shop, which is the rent of the place, product for sale is 2500 then the variable cost, total variable cost is uh, 100 plus 50 and then the total cost would be um, 2650 okay very good so now uh, do the average for me so average total cost equals the total the average total fixed cost plus average total variable cost so can you for the same example uh, find out what is your average total cost average Total fixed cost plus average total variable cost. So point out that for me also, please.
Okay. So are you ready to to show me how to do the okay average total cost? Okay. So to do the average total cost. Uh, for average total cost, there is actually a different way. You need to divide. You need to divide the total cost by the uh, number of outputs. So it's not uh, correct. Uh, so you need to divide your uh, average fi your fixed cost divided by the number of outputs. Let's say. For a hundred, what is that fixed cost for how many how many uh, products? Let's say a hundred. So if you put hundred, then what would be the answer? So so this answer is not correct for average total cost. So divided all of them, all the costs by the number of production. So your fixed cost, let's say you said if it's uh, if you said your fixed cost is, how much did you say it is? Okay, your fixed cost you said is 2,500. So you divide that fixed cost by 100 and then divide your average cost by the 100, which is the number of your units, and then do it again. Okay. So yeah, just do the whole thing for me, please. The whole formula, can you write it? Okay, Mr. Barak, so maybe you can write the formula for me. So your average total cost would be 25 plus plus how much? Are you still there? Mr. Bart? I'm still waiting for you to write the average total cost.
to answer, Mr. Kiyasi, yes, we agreed, but uh, the admin will do it from next session. So this session, they they didn't change it, but next session, they will change the economics and then the leadership. So uh, I, I told them last uh, week, and they will put it in action for next week. Sure, no problem. Would you like to answer this question, Mr. Riazi? Uh, Mr. Barak seems not to be receiving my voice. Uh, what we are doing, we are getting average total cost uh, for this example that he gave us. So this answer he gave was not correct. So he, is, he said that his company has a total fixed cost of 2500 and fixed cost of 150 sorry variable cost of 150 so his total cost was 2650 now we said what is your average total cost so the average total cost equals average fixed cost plus average variable cost so we said, let's suppose that that cost you gave us is for 100 products or 100 units of products. So then how do we calculate? OK. He said in his example that his fixed cost is 2,500. Variable cost, so total fixed cost equals 2,500, and total variable cost equals 150. So he's total cost was. 2650 Now we are asking what is his average total cost? Supposing that those were 400 units of products. So can you answer that question for us? Yes, exactly. Very good, Mr. Barak. Yes. The average is dividing. We need to divide the uh, the fixed cost by the number of units, the variable cost by the unit. It will give us the average total cost. Very good. So that will be the answer to the second question. Very good.
k. So is there any questions or comments? Uh, anybody has any questions? Okay, so if there is no question, we can conclude the class. Just be noted that next week, uh, first we will have the economics, and the next session we will have the leadership. So instead of leadership and then economics, we will have economics class and then the leadership class. So uh, just uh, please know that and let your other friends know. That is uh, out of your request for having economic class first and then economic, uh, then leadership. Okay, so I hope you have a nice day. And those of you who celebrate the Nature Day or Seize the Vedar, I hope that you have fun with your families and friends. And uh, hope you have a nice week. And see you next week.